In this video, I'm going to illustrate how lag screws can be used rather than L90s or some other type of frame and anchor in a seismic retrofit. This is a construction detail, and what it shows is it shows a lag screw that comes up here and it penetrates through the lower top plate here, the upper top plate here, and goes directly into the middle of a floor joist. Now this floor joist is always in line with the upper and lower top plates because this right here on the outside all along here, that's where the siding goes. And in order for the siding to fit, the joist must be right on the edge of the upper top plate and the lower top plate. So when we drive a lag screw through these, uh, these, uh, these top plates and we get it right in the center, which is what's required by the manufacturer of the screw, if we get it right in the center, it has a lot of capacity. It can resist 400 pounds uh, per lag screw and it allows us to do this when there's sheetrock. So I'd like for you to see this right here. This is sheetrock that runs along here as part of the ceiling. Here's a ceiling joist. And so the ceiling joist can be there and we can put in one of these lag screws you know, straight up into the uh, end joist without having to tear out the sheetrock. I'm gonna uh, give you a video right now that shows you exactly how we do that. Okay, here I'm standing in front of a shear wall and I need to make sure that my shear wall is attached to the floor above. So normally I'd have to tear off the sheetrock right up here and then put in a L90 or some type of framing anchor. But in this system, I just use a lag screw. This is from Simpson, it's uh, six inches long. And it's six inches long for a very good reason. You have to have at least two inches of penetration for this to work. So I'm gonna show you how these are installed. I had this spacer made at a machine shop. As you can see, there's a hole right through the center of it. It's 7 30 seconds of an inch. And we do that because the screw we use has a pilot hole that's 7 30 seconds of an inch. So let me show you how this is done. Okay, the first thing I do is I put my drill bit through this uh, jig right here, like that. And then I hold it up to the floor joist, I mean to the <coughs> top plates. And then I drill. Now that is a pilot hole for the lag screw. Now this is exactly three quarters of an inch from here to here. The floor joist above is inch and a half. So when I drive the lag screw through, it'll go right in the center of the floor joist, which is where it belongs. Okay, there's the lag screw right here. Here's my driver. Now that can resist 400 pounds for each lag screw. You have to calculate how many you need, but it's a pretty simple affair. And this way we've saved the homeowner all the expense of tearing out the ceiling. It's a whole lot cheaper for the contractor, it's cheaper for the homeowner, and it does a really good job. In order for this system to work, it's absolutely critical that the lag screws make it into the center of the joist, and that's the whole purpose of that jig. So I wanna explain again how it works. So this is the jig itself. That's the round stock made out of metal. We're looking, of course, at it so at the end so we can see the hole. Now it's inch and a half round stock from here to here, which means from the edge of the siding, it's exactly three quarters of an inch. Now that three quarters of an inch is what we need to go into our, uh, into our joist. So what we do is we take this round stock with the hole in it, we come up here, and then we drill straight through the, uh, through the jig. We make this hole through the double top plates into the joist itself, and now we have the pilot hole. And the pilot hole is exactly three quarters of an inch from, this, uh, from the siding to here, which puts it straight in the center of the joist, which is, of course, where we want it to be. Now, sometimes we're dealing with two inch lumber, and it's the exact same principle. So here we have round stock. This is actually two inch round stock. So it's two inches from here to here or from the edge of the siding, it's, uh, it's one inch. So we'll take this round stock and we'll put it up underneath the joist and then we'll drill through it with a, uh, with a pretty long uh, drill bit. It's 7 30 seconds and we'll come up here and so then we'll drill straight through and we'll make this hole and because the distance of this joist to the siding 
is one inch. And the distance of the uh, siding right here to the center of the jig is one inch. When we do, when we drill that out, this hole is going to be exactly one inch uh, into the center of the joist, and the joist is two inches thick, so we're right in the center, and we know 100% it's right where it needs to be, and we don't have to tell all that sheetrock. Here's the same detail uh, from the side. This right here is the uh, stud bay, and we took our driver and we drove these lags through here. And this is the lower top plate, this is the uh, upper top plate, and this right here is the sheetrock, and here we have the joist. Now we do have a problem here. Right here uh, where the top plates meet, we do have an unsecured shear plane. So what we do in that case is we make sure that we nail the two top plates together. So we'll take uh, a nail and we'll normally we'll do uh, usually two 12-penny nails for every lag because a 12-penny nail can resist approximately 188 pounds. These lags can resist uh, 400. So you know it's pretty close. So we go ahead and we nail these two top plates together with nails like this and you know we stitch nail them together so now we have a complete uh, a complete load path so the earthquake force uh, as it tries to slide this joist off the top plate then it goes into these lags right here uh, and they go into the uh, upper top plate and the lower top plate and those are you know secured and then we would have our plywood which would come up here and here and here and be nailed to everything and uh, we would have our full uh, load pass like we need. This information is from the Simpson Strong Tie Company uh, regarding their SDS lag screws which is what we use. This right here is the configuration that they're talking about and here you'll see a 2x4 uh, or you could look at that as if it were a top plate and this is the joist. Uh, right here. Here it's a floor joist. But you know, even though it's a floor joist and a bottom plate, it's the same thing. You know, just look at it, just turn that upside down and it'll be exactly the same. So if you take this table right here, it tells us that the uh, that this connection can resist 250 pounds. And then loads may be increased for load duration by the building code up to 1.6, and that is our short term load multiplier and in the end we end up with 400 pounds but now notice here that the uh, it's very important to have the uh, 5 eighths of an inch edge distance we're going right in the middle so we're getting three quarter which is what we want but they do allow you a little bit of a wiggle room here of 5 eighths of an inch which you see right there so this is the engineering basis of that uh, of that uh, of that retrofit technique and hopefully uh, I have been able to convince you that this is a viable uh, method and that you can save yourself a lot of money, you can save your, the homeowners a lot of money, and you can do a better job. And just from experience, when uh, you know, people take off the, this part of the ceiling mat, it is such a hassle. You got to put the sheetrock up, and then you got to tape it. You got to let it dry. Then you got to texture it. Then you got to make sure the paint matches. You got to go to a paint store to uh you know to, to to try to match it as best you can you usually have to you know paint the whole thing major hassle and just to put in a few lag screws you know it's nothing to it